Now, first of all, the requirement that we have to solve is first requirement is about IHT. Second requirement is also about IHT. Third requirement is about CGT and IHT. And the fourth requirement is about CGT. So it's a good question. It's a combination of uh, both IHT and CGT. And uh, there's a very much likelihood of such kind of a question, which is a combination of IHT and CGT in the exam. Kindly mute yourself. There is a distortion going on. Now, the requirement, let me read the requirement. Let's see what calculation we have to do, what explanation we have to do. So first requirement says that explain with the inheritance tax advantages. So we have to talk about inheritance tax advantages. Other than lifetime exemptions, which could have been obtained if CADA had been been had made additional lifetime gifts of quoted shares between 1st December 18 and her death. So it's a flat theory question that requires to give the advantages of lifetime gifts other than what exemption we usually get. One of the benefit is exemption. The annual exemption that is 3000 current year and 3000 of the last year. So the question specifically identifies that don't talk about the exemption, rather talk about the other benefits. So we need to identify benefits that what are the benefits. So one of the benefits of lifetime exemption, other than the exemption is, in case of uh, increase in value, there will be no consequences of increase in value what it means it means that suppose we have transferred one asset and uh, that asset has been appreciated in value so the appreciation it's not going to be assessed by hmrc the so value remains same value will be fixed this is one benefit other side of the story is that if there is a decline in the value. So what would be the consequences of that? The decline in the value. The consequences is quite, uh, I mean, surprising, quite good that in case of fall in value, we'll get some relief, which is called fall in value relief. These are the two things that you can mention over here. And other than that, we can also talk about uh, that. Uh, uh, wait a minute. One minute, please. Let me discuss the question first. You should assume that today's date is 1st December. Your firm has been asked to provide advice in connection with IHT and CGT following the death of CADA. The advice related to the implication of making a lifetime gift, making gift to charity, varying the terms of a will, and other aspects of CGT planning. So there are four areas. Now, what is the status of the CADA family? CADA, who was UK domiciled, died on 20th November 2022. Survived by two daughters, Rammer and Yang. Rammer has an adult son and Yang has no children. CADA's lifetime gifts and available NRB. So this is the available NRB. Now, one of the benefits of lifetime gift is that if it has been given to like other than charity, so you know that it's called potentially exempt transfer. So there will be no tax. And even if the, the donor survive, then still you get some relief, which is called paper relief. 
if donor die within seven years, then this potentially exempt transfer will be taxable. Otherwise, that will be completely exempt. One more benefits. So CADA has not made any lifetime gift since 30th November 2018. And NRB at the date of her death was 2,20,000 available. Now, as far as the death state is concerned, and the detail is that CADA owned assets valued at 1 million at the time of her death. So this is their, the net value of the death state. And Keda left her house valued at 500,000 to Rammer. Now, who is Rammer? Rammer is daughter of Keda. So, means the house has been given to the children. Keda left cash of 60,000 to a UK national charity. Anything given to the spouse or charity or political party, this is exempt. And there is one rule that if you give money to the charity, there might be a possibility that your rate of taxation might go down from 40 to 36 percent. So we, are, we have to see this as well in this question and whether we are able to get this 36 percent or not. And if not, then you can do some variation in the will and transfer some more amount into the national charity that will increase the chances that your rate will be reduced to 36 percent so the remaining assets including shares valued at 4 lakh 40 thousand to yang none of the remaining asset qualifies for any ist relief so this is the this is the breakup of the uh, debt state sharing among the children Rammer is not an accountant but has some knowledge of the UK tax system, has made four observations regarding her mother's estate and her inheritance tax. Rammer's four observations. My mother should have made additional gifts in her lifetime. So Rammer want to know that if her mother have additional lifetime gifts, how the life, how the IHT going to be affected by this. The tax rate on the chargeable estate should be less than 40% due to the gift to charity. To some extent, uh, Rammer is right. This is the rule. I don't intend to live in the house, but will give it to my son on 1st July 2-0. However, when she died, some of her shareholding had a value less than cost. So these are the four observations. Kada's shareholding at the time of her death, quoted shares valued at more than cost, quoted shares in FR valued at less than cost, unquoted shares valued at nil. These are three types of shares. So this is the question. And now again, let's talk about the lifetime exemptions benefit. So as I told you earlier that uh, one of the benefit is increase in value is ignored for IHT purpose. And if there is a fall in value, you'll get the fall in value relief because of the lifetime gifts. And if that lifetime gift is taxable at the time of death and the gifts have been more than three years, so from three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, taper relief will be available. So these two benefits, we can easily write and get four out of four marks. The second thing, calculate the increase in the legacy to the charity, which would be necessary in order to reduce the IHT rate and quantify the reduction in the IHT liability, which would result. So this is the calculation. We need to solve this, that uh, how much we can get out of it. So let's do some calculation here and let's find out that how much you need to put amount in charity so that we can get the reduce rate. Now we can see here. So let's talk about this. 
Now, first of all, I have to calculate uh, the baseline amount. I have to calculate the baseline amount. And what is the formula of baseline amount? So baseline amount is uh, going to be taxable estate. And then uh, we have to add it back the donation into this amount as well as the RNRB if there is any RNRB. So we need to add these two figures. We'll get the, this will be the baseline amount. Now, what is the rule? We have to find out that uh, what is the 10% value of the baseline amount. If your donation is more than that, you will get the relief. Otherwise, your relief will be not available. So first of all, let's prepare the taxable estate value before charity and after charity. So let's do this here. So this is before additional amount, before additional charity, and after additional charity. Now, first of all, uh, she left a house worth 500,000. So this is copied here. 500,000. Next is left cash worth 60,000 that has been given to the charity. And third one is other assets which are other assets which are shares. Now, what is the worth of the shares? So, total value is 1 million. So balancing figure is 440,000. This is the value of shares, 440,000. So the total value is 1 million. So we have 1 million. This is the total value. Now, after the value of assets and deduction of all the liabilities, what we need to do, we have to transfer, we have to deduct inter-spouse transfer, gift to charity. So let's deduct gift to charity. So originally, the charity amount is, let me check, what was the charity amount in the question? So the charity was, CADA left 60,000 to UK National Charity. So the charity amount is minus 60,000. So after deduction of this, we'll get uh, like gross chargeable state value That is nine lakh forty thousand. Yes, my agenda is to discuss uh, VAT as well as corporation tax after this IST. So I will discuss uh, VAT first, and then I will discuss corporation along with groups, and at the end I will going to discuss the income tax issues. So I have in mind. What's important? Don't worry about that. And even if you have some specific topic that is bothering you, that is creating a problem for you, you are not able to understand, we want some clarification on that, you can ask. So this is 9,40,000. And uh, now this, we don't know how much we have to put the additional amount. So just left it right now, okay? So after gift to charity, we get uh, this figure that is called the GCE, gross chargeable amount. Now, 
now we need to identify is there r n r b is there n r b so the house was given to the direct descendant the house was given to the child so the value of uh, house is uh, 500000 and r n r b is 175000 so we'll get lower of value of house and r n r b we get r n r b of 175000 and the nil rate band available given in the question is 2 lakh 20000 as there is no lifetime gift so we don't apply the look back 7 years rule here now as a result of this we'll get the taxable estate and here we'll apply the formula in order to find out this value so this is So this is the GCE, and uh, we are going to discuss this amount. And this is the taxable state. And what is the IHT? At this time, we need to work out what is the IHT. But before calculation of IHT, we need to find out the baseline amount. So here, let me connect this taxable state. This is the taxable state. so here i have to add donation so let's uh, put donation here but that would be a minus value so put uh, minus sign donation then let's put r n r b here so it is r n r b so what is my baseline amount in this in this case i need to find out the baseline amount So the baseline amount is is equal to some. Let's calculate. This is the baseline amount. Now. as the amount of charity is less than the 10% of baseline amount so what is 10% of baseline required is 78000 so we know charity is 60000 so we will not will not get any benefit so as a result the iht here is going to be 40% and this is you can put here 40% this is the iht payable so this is my first working now how much i need to put i need to put extra like uh, 78 my charity is existing charity is 60000 so how how much excess i need to put this is 18000 now this is the charity additional charity i need to put so let's deduct 78000 from here so as a result my gce will be 9 lakh 22000 and rnrb the rnrb will remain the same no effect nrb that will remain the same no effect and now we have the taxable estate 5 lakh 27000 let's calculate uh, 36% now i can put 36% 0.36 so this is 189720 so as a result uh, reduction in liability is going to be this minus this 28280 so this is the requirement we have completed the second part that is part b
calculate the increase in legacy is 18,000 and quantify the reduction in the IHT liability. Is that clear? Any question on that part, this part? If not, then let's go ahead. The third part says that explain again the theory question. The capital gain tax implication and IHT implications, which would be obtained by variation in the will, and set out the procedures required in order to achieve a tax effective variation. First of all, let's talk about procedure. Memorize this because it might be a few mark question. So, first of all, the procedure says that the variation must be made in writing. Number one. And the time duration is two years within the death time. And another thing very important that the purpose of variation, the purpose of variation will be to get benefit in terms of reduced tax on IHT and capital gain. If there is any other purpose, you will not get something beneficial here. Now the other part of the question, what is the capital gain tax implication advantages as a result of this? So first of all, you can see in part B that as a result of variation, what we can do, we can put more amount in charity and as a result, this result in saving in some amount which we have already calculated. Now, as far as the IHT is concerned, as far as IHT is concerned, If there is uh, no variation and uh, let me check the question. Here it has been mentioned that I don't intend to live in the house but will give it to my son on 1st July 2023. So if there is no variation in the will, he will give this house to his son and that would attract some tax in terms of PET if Kramer die within seven years of making the gift. As far as capital gain tax is concerned, His son has to pay CGT as well. And as Raymer is not using this house, his son will not get any private residence relief. Similarly, the gift holdover relief is also not available on this. So you need to vary, vary terms in order to get what I'm saying, the private residence relief. The gift holdover relief. If you want to get some relief, then you have to change the will in such a way that attracts some relief. You can mention two or three here. Now, the last part, which is about CGT. In relation to CGT, explain what beneficial action CADA could have carried out in the tax year of her death against her shareholding. So what, what, what she can do against uh, shareholding so that uh, some more relief is available.
so it has been mentioned here that cada's share holding at the time of death comprises of quoted shares in jw plc valued at more than cost quoted shares in fr plc valued at less than cost and unquoted shares have valued at nil so keeping this in mind if she sell shares in fr plc before her death so that would create some losses and what can what can she get what she can do is she can use those losses to offset against gain in the same tax year we know that the current year losses can be offset with current year gain one benefit is this similarly on death we can offset the capital losses like uh, we can carry back against gain in the previous 3 years prior to death so some cash flow benefits is also there as a result of capital losses now see such kind of question lots of theory has been there so we can see here that uh, only the part b is having calculation rest is about the rules ist and capital gain tax planning and ist planning so good theory if you have good theory knowledge then you can easily get good marks in this question so do try that question or while if you have some issues in uh, any part then uh, understand that part first and then you can try Now let's move to one more question. T, another one. Eric, here I want to attempt few part. Let's solve this first part. Calculate the total after tax proceed against two capital gain tax disposal. After tax proceed means first we have to calculate CGT and then we have to deduct sale price minus CGT in order to get this after sale proceed. so let's talk about disposal of two assets you should assume that today's date is 10th march your client eric required advice on the capital gain tax implication arising from the receipt of insurance proceed and the disposal of some shares and the ist reliefs also some personal service company rule which we will discuss later on eric is resident in domicile is a higher rate tax payer is in bad health and expected to die within next few months capital transactions during tax year 21 22 no disposal for capital gain tax purpose in year 21 22 other than those detailed below eric received insurance proceed of 10000 following damages to a valuable painting this painting was damaged and damage means there is a disposal and we have to calculate the gain or loss eric sold half of the share holding in mplc for 11.5 per share as far as damage painting is concerned eric purchased the painting for 46000 this is the original cost the painting was damaged in october 21 such that immediately afterwards its value fell to 38000 insurance proceed received on 1st december had not had the painting repaired so no amount has been spent on repairing the painting so it is a case of the part disposal that we need to apply part disposal against the damaged painting the first one is damaged painting we have to calculate gain second is disposal of shares so we have to calculate something like that we have to talk about reliefs so let's uh, apply the calculation as far as the shares are concerned is a quoted trading company with 200000 shares so it's a quoted trading company and um, 
eighty percent of the chargeable assets will always be in chargeable business assets. So chances are that it is a kind of a gift relief. Total assets chargeable are eighty percent, twenty percent are non non chargeable asset. Eric was given twelve thousand shares in Malaga PLC by his sister on fifth fifth August when they were valued at one twenty six thousand. So Eric received these shares from her sister as a gift. Eric's sister had purchased the shares for ninety six thousand on first March. Gift holdover relief was claimed against this on fifth August two thousand and eighteen. Eric paid the IST arising on the gift following her sister's death on first September. Eric had never worked for Malaga PLC. Eric sold six thousand shares on first March two zero two two. So this is the two situation that we we have to deal. Now let's apply some calculation here. Requirement of the question was to calculate gain against these two disposals. So first of all, against damage painting. So the insurance proceed received is ten thousand. So now it should be considered as a part disposal calculation. so we need to apply the part disposal formula and uh, we need to split the original cost original cost is 46000 so let's apply the cost see original cost is uh, 46000 i need to multiply this by a fraction that says that uh, sale proceed Which is ten thousand. Over ten thousand plus value of damaged property. This, and I need to put this. So it's nine five eight three. This is the. calculation this is the cost associated with insurance proceed receive and as a result i have a chargeable gain of the difference is 417 now second one is disposal of shares in malaga plc here first of all the Sale proceed. How many shares we are selling? We are selling six thousand shares. Price has been given, and that price has been given eleven point five in the question. So, oh, this is the value. Now we need to assign cost. so cost but uh, this is a gift so i need to find out uh, the working here she she get this from her sister so i need to see when her sister gave it to him what was the value so the sister purchased this for 96000 and uh, at the time when it was given to eric was 126000 so she is a donor and from the donor's point of view will calculate the gain first and will claim rollover relief then so it's uh, yeah we can do market value market value is One lakh twenty six thousand, and uh, deduct the cost, which is ninety six thousand. So as a result, gain is twenty four thousand. This is eligible for gift relief. So gain 
eligible for gift relief but as there is a chargeable business asset only 80% so how much relief we can get against this okay this is basically not 24 it's 30000 but the gain is not 30000 why because this is 30000 and we have 80% chargeable business asset so our gain is restricted 24000 and 6000 is immediately taxable which donor has to pay now what is the cost Cost will take it uh, as uh, the market value here, and market value is one lakh twenty six thousand. Now, from the donee's point of view, the market value becomes the cost. We deduct gift relief from it in order to create a base value. So, gift relief is this. So, we have to deduct this put minus here so this is the base cost and the base cost is one lakh two thousand now half of the shares have been sold so let's see what, what was the quantity of shares sold? Eric was given 12,000 shares and she sold 6,000 shares. So the base cost uh, that we can take here, you can connect this here. We have this. We have uh, this value. But this is related to entire holding. So what I'm going to do, as it's related to 6,000 shares. So this is the cost of half 6,000 shares, which is going to be 51,000. As a result, the gain is 69 minus 51. It's going to be 8,000. So there are two gains. One is this one. Other is this one. Other is this one. These are the two gain. Question was says that calculate after tax proceed. So proceed is let's talk about proceeds. The so proceed we get ten thousand of insurance amount, and the disposal value is this one sixty nine thousand. So it's 69,000. So total proceed is 79,000. And um, okay, let me calculate it somewhere. I need to find out the tax liability. So these are the gain. Let me calculate it here. Let me calculate it here. That uh, sale proceed is uh, 10,000 insurance value plus 69,000. So total proceed is this. And then we have to deduct tax, tax CGT that we need to work out. So total gain is one is eighteen thousand and other is four one seven. So that means this eighteen thousand plus this four eight one four seven and uh, it's a higher rate taxpayer. So it means if it is a higher rate taxpayer, so I am going to apply. Wait one minute. I forget to discuss the annual exemption, CGT annual exemption. 
I have to discuss, I have to deduct the annual exemption. After annual exemption, this is taxable gain and taxable gain is going to be 6117. Now let's apply CGT. As he's a higher rate taxpayer, so there is no 10% benefit. Directly we can put 20% over here. This is my CGT. And let's connect this CGT here. So after tax proceed, so this is after tax proceed. And uh, the after tax proceed is is equal to um, this is basically my final answer good calculation based question it covers your two areas one is the damage painting other one is the gift hold over relief Now let's move to, let's try one more part related to IHT. Let's discuss one part from here. Pescara. So the relevant part is let's try this part. Calculate the IHT payable against Marina's gift of shares in CPANG PLC as a result of her death. So it's gift of shares as a result of death. You should assume that today's date is 1st December. Pescara require advice on the IHT payable on the death. Pescara and her parents. Pescara is a higher rate taxpayer. She is resident in UK, domicile in UK. Her father, Galvez, died on 1st June 2008. Mother, Marina, died on 1st October 22. Both were resident domicile in UK. Galvez, lifetime gifts and gifts on death. Galvez had not made any lifetime gift. In his will, left cash of 80,000 to Pescara and a further 80,000 to Pescara's brother. So that means total 1,60,000 was inherited. Galvez left the remainder of his estate to his wife, Marina, which is an exempt transfer. Because this is inter-spouse. Marina's lifetime and gift on death Marina gave Pescara 3,75,000 shares in CPENG PLC. Marina had made no other lifetime gifts. Now details of the gift. Gift of 3,75,000 shares in CPENG PLC to Pescara. Uh, Marina purchased this uh, 3,75,000 shares or for 4,20,000. This is the cost. Marina gave all of the shares to Pescara. Shares were quoted at 1.84 to 1.96. IES and lowest marked bargain was this. As this is a gift, so we need market value, but market value is not given. So we need to work out the valuation method. We need to apply valuation method here. Valuation of shares. So the shares did not qualify for BPR or CGT gift rollover relief. The NR, NR, IHT NRB for the tax year is 3,12,000. This is the information that I need to work on. First of all,
let's find out the disposal value so Three lakh seventy five thousand shares. So first of all, transfer of value we need to find out. Transfer of value is not given. The year of gift is sixteen seventeen. So we have annual exemption, and this annual exemption relates to. current year as well as last year 6000 and uh, this is the chargeable amount at the time of gift but i need to find out this transfer of value let's find out transfer of value valuation of shares valuation of shares so we need to apply the valuation rule, which is the lower of next. It's your quarter up method and mid price. So as far as quarter up method is concerned, it's uh, the lower value, which is uh, 1.84 given. Plus, we have uh, higher value, which is given 1.96 minus 1.84. Break it close. We have to divide this. Sorry, multiply this by one fourth. So this is 1.87. And what is the mid price? Mid price is basically what was the price given in the question. So 1.8 and 1.92. Take the average 1 1.8, 1.92, 92. And uh, we need to multiply this sorry it's wrong value it's uh, divided by whole so let me just put This is the average value, 1.6. So we'll take lower off. So lower off is 1.86. How many shares have been transferred? 3,75,000 multiply by this lower off value. So this is my transfer of value. Deduct 6,000. Chargeable value is 691. 500. Now, as it is a potentially exempt transfer, it's going to be an exempt one unless her mother die within seven years. So, as her mother die within seven years, so we need to work out that state of pet on death. Now, it's taxable again. And you need to work out the debt from our pro forma. So the chargeable value, you can write here the chargeable value. This is the chargeable value, 691. Now we need to deduct two things. Here we need to find out uh, the NRB of Marina. And if there is any uh, transferred from her husband we can add that transfer as well so marina's uh, own nrb own nrb it's uh, let me 
work out it here nrb own 3,25,000 unused from her husband. Let's calculate unused. So his husband has given two gift worth 1,6,000. NRB was uh, let's see the Galway's information. Galway's had not made any lifetime gift, left cash of 80,000 to Pescara and 80,000 to her brother, total 160,000. And uh, what about the Galway's uh, nil rate band? So the Galway's nil rate band is. So what is the NRB value of uh, death of Galvis that is uh, June 2008 the yes this is 3,12,000 given in the question so the Galvis has uh, this uh, unused which is uh, So three lakh twelve thousand. No, first of all, let me find out the unused here. That uh, NRB was uh, three lakh twelve thousand minus one lakh sixty thousand transferred. So this is one lakh fifty thousand, and we need to find out the percentage. Percentage is uh, one lakh fifty two thousand. One lakh fifty two thousand into This is the percentage and we need to apply this percentage on the current year value so unused you can work out here this is the value this is the value multiply by this one so this is the unused value this is roughly So as a result, total NRB, it's, uh, we can write here, total NRB, what value we have to deduct is this one, plus this one, this is the total NRB available, put minus sign over here. The chargeable value minus NRB and I will get the taxable value and my taxable value is uh, around 208.167. Death rate is uh, 40 percent. Let's apply 40 percent. So we have uh, this is the IHT. 83 and uh, on this IHT we need to apply taper relief as well so let me do something here so this is IHT payable we have to apply taper relief her death is 
from five to six years. So from five to six years, five dash six, so minimum 20. So she will get uh, three to four 20, four to five 40, five to six 60. She will get 60% of this amount as a relief. So 0.6, this is the relief. And we have to deduct this amount. So this is IHT payable on the gift on. And that is going to be 33307 approx. This is the answer. Again, lots of calculation. Good question for calculation point of view. See the requirement again. Requirement was first one. Seven marks question. Calculate the IHT payable against Marina's gift in sexy pang as a result of her death. So all together calculation. 